We're going to do a presentation of the, the Mexico mission trip that we were just on here a few months ago. Um, we're going to start off with a, a video uh, that Joel put together here for us, and then we're going to take turns. There's a few of us that are, um, are, are going to speak here and, and just tell a little bit about our experience in Mexico and, and, and uh, how God has blessed that trip. So we're going to show the quick video first.
makes me homesick. Hi, my name's Tammy Park. I don't know if any, everybody knows me or not, but um, this is our third time we've been to Mexico. And last year when I gave my presentation, I did a geography lesson on the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. So just being a teacher, I can't help it. Today I'm going to start with a science lesson. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the ripple effect. Um, the one quote up there says, friends can become family. And there's a process in how that happens. So I looked up the definition of a ripple effect, and um, one of them says, it's a situation in which some events causes a series of other events to happen. So I continued to do some digging, and I did not realize how much research is out there on the ripple effect. Um, there's even research done in that field of quantum physics, which sounds like a bad word to me. I don't really understand it. But what they do is um, they study energy and how it affects other things. Um, but one of the things that they started to do was they looked at um, an atom. And the atom is the building block of all living matter. So, and you know if you've taken that basic life science course that atoms can be broken down into protons, neutrons, and electrons. But then scientists began to study even further, and they found that those things are made of, up of smaller particles called leptons and quarks. And they kept studying until they finally realized that there is no matter the very, very basic of what our, our building matter is made out of, the atom, is energy. So other scientists who study behavior took that theory, and they began to 
um, study positive thoughts and positive actions. So what they did was they took a group of people and they did an experiment with a kindness game. They wanted to see how far out the ripple of kindness would affect. And what they found out was that if person A does something kind, it can affect person C and person C's people that they're affected that they are in connection with. So they can tell that being positive or doing something positive has an effect. Well, we as Christians, we already know that. We know that God created energy and from that all these things happen. But we also know when you study the book of Exodus, it's kind of a boring book, it's about the law. And sometimes you think, why do we have to know that? Well. God put the law in effect for the Israelites to keep them safe and for them to be blessed. And if you look in the book of Exodus, there's two verses that talks about the consequences and the blessings of your, um, your obedience. In Exodus 25, God says, I will punish children for their parents' sin to the third and fourth generation of those that hate me. Now, when I've been in church, that usually was the focus. You know, it's like if you're bad, it's going to affect the third and fourth generation. But if you continue in verse 6, it says, But I am loyal and gracious to the thousandth generation of those that love me and keep my commandment. The thousandth generation. Do you know how many great, 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 great grandparents that is? That's a lot. So why am I talking about this? Why does this ripple effect have anything to do with this missions presentation? Well, if you're in the teaching field and you do a lesson, you always go back to depth of knowledge. And the goal for the depth of knowledge is to get the highest level of learning from your students. And the highest depth of knowledge is application. It's like what you hear today what you listen to, you put it in here, it processes to the back of your brain where it stays, and then you put that in action. So today, at the end of the lesson, we have little pebbles for you to take home because we want you to take this challenge or this application and you start the ripple effect on where you live. Um, Today, as we listen to each of the testimonies that our group brings, I want you to hear how not only they affected Mexico, but how Mexico affected them in their lives today. And I want to start <clears throat> with a story that Mama Rosa told us that happened last year, but she told us this year. Now. I don't know how to explain this because for us, we think of miracles as happening once in a while. But in Mexico, when you live on a faith-based philosophy, where you don't have a set budget to live by, when you can take care of two orphanages, meet all those financial needs, have every child go to or school, at um, primary or high school, even some go to college. When you think about that, and you think about that they don't have a, a salary of their own or health insurance, everything's faith-based. So when you have that philosophy, miracles happen all the time. So the story I'm going to share is one that Mama very calmly told us in the van going somewhere. She started off by saying, do you know the money that your friend sent me saved my life? Well, what happened, we're going to start with this pebble, one of my friends who doesn't go to church here, who's a Christian, and the Holy Spirit laid it on her heart to send some money down for the missions field. She's never been there. She doesn't know Mama and Papa, has never met them. But God told her that I want you to put money in a cart, and I want it to go specifically to Mama Rosa. I want this money to be used by her. So my friend wrote a card, she put the money in it, and she instructed me to give it to Mama. Well, I gave the money to Mama, um, and I told her, and she read the card, and I said, this is specifically for you. However, God tells you to use this money, that's what you're to do. So Mama now is 70 years old, 
and she runs two orphanages. She can have up to 100 children. I can't even imagine that. But the other um, problem Mama has is she deals with rheumatoid arthritis. It's very painful, and it's very crippling. She prays about it. Um, when we gave her the money, she knew that she was to take it to go see a doctor and to um, get treatment for her rheumatoid arthritis. So she went to a Christian doctor, and he set her up on a regimen of vitamins and minerals that she was to take every day, and it was a strong regime. It wasn't just like one little vitamin. It was a lot. So she was faithfully taking her medicine, and one morning in October, she woke up, and she wasn't feeling well. She had pains going up and down her, heart, or her arm. Her heart felt funny. Now, I don't know about you, but if I think I'm having a heart attack, I'm going to immediately run to the hospital, call a doctor. Mama calmly calls her husband in and says, I just want to let you know, I think I'm having a heart attack, and when I, when I die today, I'm going to wake up in heaven. Well, you can imagine the panic they felt, even though they're Christians. You know, Mama is this crucial part of their ministry, and they weren't ready to lose her. So they rushed her off to the hospital. And I love this part of the story because we just sang about waking up in glory. That's what Mama thought she was going to do. Can you imagine what she felt like when she woke up and she was in a hospital? So she um, becomes conscious, they, they work on her a little bit, and then the doctor comes in, and he talks to her about her medical history. What kind of medicines is she taking? So she proceeded to tell him all of the things that she's taking, and she was taking a strong regimen of calcium. Now, calcium is a mineral that helps your blood vessels. It helps your heart. It helps your... Um, um, control your blood pressure. So because she was taking a strong regimen of that medicine, um, it saved her from a heart attack. And basically, within 24 hours, Mama was feeling fine and able to go back to her job as being the mama of two orphanages. So why are we starting with this story? What is so important about this story? Well, when I think about it, because it's, it's like a two-year story, this pebble right here represents our church, our church that has a vision for sending missionaries out. This pebble, it represents the teams that every year it feel led to go down and to minister. And this pebble represents a person who's not even affiliated with Mexico at all but felt led to send money. This is a pebble that I want you to think about. This represents your heart. Now, I don't know where you are in your life today. I don't know what kind of ripples you need to have. Maybe it's your home life. Maybe it's your school life. Maybe it's your work area. Maybe it's your community. Maybe it's your church. But one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to pass these out to help you remember that you can make a ripple. You can start that chain of positive. You can be obedient to what God has you to do, and it can, each pebble that creates a ripple can create a wave. That wave can create a tide, and that tide can change the world. So with that, Penny. Hi, I'm Penny Kerouac. And this was my first missions trip, and hopefully not my last missions trip. My scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. During one of our post-trip meetings, the question was raised, what was the experience, was the experience what you expected? Well, for me, after listening to Tammy and Jason all those months leading up to our trip, I tried not to have a lot of expectations, mostly an open mind, because they stressed that plans may change at any time, and they did. One thing was, was for us is there was a lot of downtime, a lot of waiting time. We joked that we were on Mexico time or Mama time, and if something was happening in an hour, that could usually turn into four hours. 
So that turned out to be a good thing because it gave us a chance to get to know each other as team members and to get to know better Mama and Papa, the rest of the staff, and of course the kids. One of the things I did expect, though, was that we would be doing some kind of physical labor, so I planned for that. What I didn't plan on were the hours of time we spent talking and listening to Mom and Papa and the other staff. And I wondered, I wondered what I was doing there. We weren't really doing anything physical, so I really wondered what I was doing there. But after getting home, I realized that God's plan for us was to be listeners, observers, encouragers, and advisors. While listening, we learned that we, were the, we are the only church that sends people to their orphanage. Mom and Papa and the others were happy to have us there. They, give it, they saw it as a chance to see that we really do care about them. It's not just the money we send, but that we care about them and what they do there. Um, they leaned heavy, heavily on us for moral support. And during our talks, we found that there were some issues that, that needed to be resolved, and they were able to talk things over with us. Um, excuse me, my notes are all on one sheet of paper. One of our pebbles was to be listeners and to be a sounding board so that with our insight, they could help make some of these decisions. Also, um, when you walked in there, into the orphanages, you know what an orphanage is, and I did have expectations on that, which were totally blown out of the water because when you walk in there, you walk into a home. There's no doubt that these children are very loved and very cared for. And being there gave them encouragement because we told them this, and they were happy to know that what they were striving for was being met. So we gave them encouragement to continue on with their mission and in reaching out to others. intentional. Good morning. I'm Tammy Kerouac. Um, this was also my first missions trip, and as Penny said, I'm, I'm hopeful that it won't be my last. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned there was that God can and does remove barriers, because going down there, I mean, I had high school Spanish, but I haven't used it since high school, and so I, ex I just thought, that would be my biggest thing to deal with, would be that, you know, I couldn't speak to them. But it was really cool how God just removed that. Uh, one of the things that we were able to do was put an app on our phone, and all the kids knew how to use phones, so it would translate. Like, we would type it in English, and they could read it in Spanish, and then we could flip it back and forth. So it allowed us to communicate and talk with them. Uh, some of them understood some of the language, and the longer we were there, and as Jason said, like completely immersed in the culture, we started to pick up what they were saying and understanding more. Um, we also, as Penny said, there was Mexico time and there was mama time. Um, I tend to be a procrastinator, my husband will tell you that, but I feel like that when I do that, it, I, I'm put under pressure, and so I work better like because I have to get things done so I'm we get down there to Mexico I'm thinking we've only got a week to get things done here and we waited and we waited and we waited mama would say we were going to go to town at 9 30 we left at 1 30 and that's kind of what our week was like like we just did everything on her time and she would not leave the orphanage until everything was where it needed to be the kids um, there was a question in the first service about, um, th like, couldn't we adopt those kids? When you see them in that setting, you don't want to take them because they are so loved and cared for. We went down there as a missions team. They didn't need their, like, they didn't need to learn about Jesus because they hear it every single day. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Yours, Mine, and Ours. That's what it's like. Like all, there's a boy's room and a girl's room for their laundry and their clothes. They go in and pick an outfit. It is a well-oiled machine. And those kids play, they laugh. You would not know they were orphans if you didn't know that. Um, and we, I, one of the things that like really stood out to me, and I said this the last night we were there because they prayed over us for safety going home. 
Um, we went there to be a blessing to them, and they actually were a blessing to us. Um, just, I, I get, I'm just so overwhelmed, like, to think about the fact that they live every single day of their life in complete and total faith because, as it was shared earlier, they don't have a budget. Um, children's services in this state, in our country, they provide money for families to support the children and meet their needs. They don't get that there. So everything that they use to support those kids comes from us. Um, the, the pictures, I don't know if anybody paid attention, but I, just to give you an idea, um, God meets their needs every day. And just a little thing that just, it, it touched my heart. We, the Taramara Indians, the women that were on there that had those beautiful dresses on, I don't know if anybody paid attention to them, I was mesmerized by them because those dresses, they make them and they sew them by hand. So if anybody does any sewing, like if you saw how much went into them, like it, it was amazing. And we were driving around all week, like helping them pick up supplies and they wanted us to approve of what they bought and everything. And Jason's driving everywhere we go, and I sit towards the back of the van. Well, the way they keep traffic under control are speed bumps everywhere. So we'd be driving down. I just wanted a really good picture of these women. Like, they were beautiful. And every time I'd go to take the picture, he'd hit a bump, and the picture would be off to the side, or it would be, like, moving or whatever. So we're leaving Chihuahua. No. Wachochi. We were leaving Wachochi, and we're driving down the road, and I'm like, I'm just in the back seat, and I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, all I want is a really good picture of one of these dresses because they're beautiful. That's all I want. So we left there, and we pulled into this little stand to get some, what did we get? Quesadillas or something. We got something to eat on the way home. And we pulled in, and Tammy's outside the van, and she yells, here they come. And I turned around, and they're walking right towards us. And I was like, oh, yes, Lord, you're so good. So I snapped the picture. I got like three good ones, the ones that were up there. Just to give you an idea of God's sense of humor, so Papa has uh, potty stops between Wachochi and Chihuahua, and he's got them timed out for women's bladders. It was great. And we pull into this little... It, it's not a minute mart or anything. It was just a, a roadside stop. So we're getting ready to get out, and in pulls this bus. What gets out? A whole busload full of Tarmar Indians. And I'm like, you've got such a great sense of humor. <laughs> so um, Jason bought us these to go on our trip, and um, they, are, they were a devotional. And so we started seven days before we left, did them while we were there, and then seven days coming home. And a couple of the things that really stood out to me, um, so it gives us a word each day and breaks it down like a key verse and uh, the welcome and the question or whatever. Um, so one of them one day was helpfulness. And I, I wrote down that this to me was our purpose there, was to provide for others who are in need or make it easier for them to deal with a problem or improve their lives. And then kindness doing whatever it takes to make life better for someone else. The Talmud says that the highest form of wisdom is kindness. And then the last thing, and I prayed this going down. Um, it was the 16th. It was the day we were traveling down. And there was a prayer that we were to do as part of it. And it says, Dear God, meeting new people, strangers, can sometimes feel uncomfortable. So I hold back and stay with the people I already know. Teach me to welcome each new person and see them not as a stranger, but as a new friend. I want to listen to their stories and care about them. Forgive me for the times I avoid others. May this trip be less about me and more about the welcome Christ wants me to give to others. And that's what the trip was about for me. Like it, it just brought me kind of full circle. I would encourage anybody, like, I know it's, like, hard to give up your vacation time, but I promise you, you will come back and you will have a stronger relationship with God than you've ever known in your entire life. Hi, uh, my name is Joel Book. Um, I probably know most of you, but uh, I know I don't know everybody. And I forget everybody's names, so now you know mine. Come introduce yourself later to me. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to talk about, you know, 
Uh, it ties to uh, Tammy's last point about kind of stepping out there and meeting people you don't know. And and uh, every evening we would share as a group, uh, every evening during the mission trip, we would share as a group our highs and our lows. Um, and the one night I, I shared this, um, that, uh, you know, God had put it on my heart that uh, one of the points that came out of the the, the the book that we were using was how hard it is to love those who are hard to love and how difficult that can be. And, you know, I realized myself that I had this tendency to shy away from people I don't know, um, you know, people who aren't Christians. I mean, it's easy It's easy to witness to somebody once you've r figured out they're a Christian, right? You're like, good, they already know the message. I can't screw this up, right? That's not what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to witness, um, you know, to the ugly, to the the poor, the oppressed. Uh, Jesus came and, and uh, you know, he didn't spend his time uh, preaching to those who already knew God. He, he went and found the ones who didn't know God. For me, that's a challenge. Um, so the thing that, um, I, I didn't have a verse, but if you're filling out your sheet, I have Jesus taught us to love those who are hard to love. And I, I discovered that on our um, five-hour ride back from Guachochi. And Chip, can you... Can you play the video? I didn't play it the first time because we had some technical challenges, but I think you'll enjoy the video. <laughs> Crank it real loud, too. <laughs> I think I have the sound turned up. I don't know. Can you get to the play button? Okay, so this is uh, one of the graduations. We went to two graduation ceremonies on the same day. This is primary graduation. And every, every class did their own little dance. So we were there for like two and a half, three hours. But I recorded this one. And as you can tell, the music is quite catchy, right? <laughs> uh, so just think about this music playing in your mind for like three or four straight hours, okay? Chip, you can go, go ahead and turn it down. So what happened was, and this does tie back to my point, it does tie together. I got in the back of the van on the way back from Guachochi with Conchito. Now Conchito is 26. Uh, Mama and Papa found him on the streets. His, his mother was into drugs. Uh, she eventually got arrested. They were able to um, get him adopted, for better lack of a better word. Um, but he doesn't communicate. He has special needs. Um, he will walk up to, and if, he, if he's interested in something you're doing, he would just sort of like bump you with his arm on the way by and then keep walking, right? And you're like, well, I don't know what that meant. And, you know, for me, I really shy away from people I can't communicate with. It was very difficult for me. I, I, I didn't know what to say. How, what do you say? Um, and so I spent five hours on the bus or on the van riding back with Conchito. Um, he played this video literally for about four of the hours. He just kept, he, he would go through your phone and look at your pictures, but every once in a while he'd find something he really liked. Um, and this video was, he really liked. So he just kept replaying it over and over and over. So uh, for the six of us that were on the van, it's ingrained into our minds and probably I uh, wake up in cold sweats. Tammy Kerry wakes up in cold sweats some nights. <laughs> but you know, it's one thing I discovered that, um, you know, some of the boys at the orphanage, you know, I quickly discovered that I was the only one using toilet paper. And I'm like, oh. And then I watched him help prepare food, and I'm like, oh. I, what am I to do with that? <laughs> uh, and they didn't speak the language. I don't know if you saw on the slide that, that it, in the one worship service, some of the boys were there with me, and poor Juan fell asleep. Um, I don't think we were there five minutes. He was out. They had, it's 85 degrees in Guachochi because it's so much cooler there than it was in Chihuahua. And I'm, I'm sweating. And both uh, Ramon and Juan have heavy, heavy coats on. And they want to be against me, like against me. They got my arm and they put it around and they're on top of me and I'm sweating. And I'm like, can we just sit in our chairs, please? <laughs> um, but, you know, I, it turned out that with those experience, that experience with Conchito, and with those boys were probably the most valuable experience to me. And um, 
you know, it just taught me to uh, communicate in other ways than words, right? Um, just sometimes it's just attention. Um, I saw a quote one time that attention is, is the greatest form of kindness. Um, and those who have a lot of kids, you probably re recognize that, that it's, it's a commodity. Attention is a commodity. Um, but um, just to tie this up then, you know, as I brought this back, and Tammy talks about her, uh, uh, about the ripple effect, um, you know, I, I now when I go to work, you know, I, I struggle at work to be a Christian, keep, keep my temper under control, to not get frustrated. Uh, when I walk in the door now, I look at my work as my mission field. And so that's, that's what I do with my pebble. It's going to go to work. It's going to sit on my desk. Because um, I, can't, I can't really be a Christian and go into work every day and act the way that I've acted in the past, you know. Um, I have a strong personality, so I, when I want to do something, I want to do it my way, and I typically I push. And, you know, that's something, um, that's something that, that I've been learning, especially on this mission trip. You just can't push all the time. Push doesn't, push doesn't move you forward. I think a lot of us think that, but rarely does pushing move you forward in this world. So for me, I, I think that's the message I want you to, to take is, you know, don't, don't look for the easy ways to share your faith with people. That's not what Jesus came to do. He, he wants you to find the difficult, right? Um, and <clears throat> he wants you to find the difficult because he wants you to realize that it's, it's not about you. It's not about your uh, faith. It's not about your strength. It's, it's uh, Christ showing through you. So, thank you. So in preparation for for today and and sharing with everyone, you know, um, what happened in Mexico, we th we thought it'd be a good idea to have some question and answer time. So, be thinking about some questions that uh, you maybe want some answers to, or something about this trip or past trip. So, uh, as I prepare for that, or you guys can be thinking about some questions you may want to ask. Um, as we did our as our devotional was. Of less of me, more of him. Uh, inside the devotional, there was a there was a spot in here where after you come home, how to prepare for sharing with people about your trip, or how sharing about what God has done, how He's working in your life. And one of the thing was to to come up with some Bible verses and some other things that that uh, would help explain just exactly that. So I want to read you know one of the a couple of the verses that that uh, I wrote down, and one was from Luke 10, and said, uh, you know, why do you go on this trip? Why in Mexico? Why not just stay here or something? Uh, and it's about love. And, and, and he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And these people from Mexico, they're exactly just that. They're our neighbors. They're our, they're our people, and, and, and we love them. And, and we had a quote that was on the, on the TV there. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. And, and the quote is, there are friends, there is family, and there are friends that become family. And the people of Mexico really, truly have become part of our family. And, and it's just a wonderful blessing to, to be with them and get down there and, and see them and visit with them. Um, you know, and the, we're put in action with with our faith, and and that came from James two, and this was another verse that we had wrote down, which uh, faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but no deeds? Can such faith save them? Support a brother or a sister. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, "Go in peace, keep warm and well fed." but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action, is dead. And we don't want to be a dead church. We want to be a missional church. We want to be part of this mission field wherever we're at, in our mission field every day, whether we're at our job, whether we're here, wherever we're at, whatever we're doing. Um, one of the things that Papa did when we were out trying to get some things that they needed, things that they couldn't afford to get, things that they wanted, Papa's always on his mission field. We went to the, we had to get some parts for their vehicle because the roads are terrible and the, the vehicle was falling apart and they needed a new strut. So we went to the auto parts store. While we were there just buying a strut, 
Papa's talking about Jesus. He's sharing the love of Jesus with the guy that was waiting on him. Every place that we went um, two years ago, when we were, last year when we were there, um, Papa stopped the entire busload of people and pulled off this along the side of the road because there was a gentleman from Guatemala that was coming in there. Papa's like, I need two of my children. He picked out two of his children. They got off the bus. He went and talked to the person right along the road from Guatemala and, and you know, told him that Jesus loved him, handed him some Bible tracts, bought him some fruit cantaloupes or something that was right there and give them to them. But, but Papa's always on a mission, and, and that's the way we need to be, is we need to be on a mission no matter where we're at, whatever we're doing, and, and what God has going on in our life. But we should be always prepared to, to give our testimony and share what God's doing with us. And, and these people that went on this trip, you know, wonderful people, very glad to serve alongside them, and, and it was really good. So we just, anything that we've done, we, you know, it's, it's, it's praise and glory to God. It's... It's nothing more than that. And we just want to thank you guys for all your prayers and support and that sort of thing. So I want to open it up to questions. If you have any questions, things that you'd like answered, um, things that might. Anybody have any questions? So we did have a video that we tried to show earlier, and, and it didn't come out real good, but. Uh, Tio and Tia from Wachochi um, were one. Tio was talking, and he was basically just thanking God for being such such a faithful, uh, you know, part of his life, and all the things that God, you know, has done through his life, and how it's come full circle, and and God has shown him about his faithfulness, and and how if he continues to be that way, you know, how God is going to take care of them, and again, like all the rest said. These, these miracles and things that happen are just, they're just wonderful to watch and, and see. So um, we're not going to show that other video, but I, I'm going to share on the back of our book. Again, we did, a, we, we did this uh, as in preparation to, during, and then after, and it was less of me, more of him. There was a quote on the back to, of it I, just, I wanted to read because I thought it was really good. Um, a lot of part of this book was it was in preparation. John the Baptist was uh, sharing with people how wonderful Jesus was, and he was the reason that that we're here, and he's got to be the reason that 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 we do the things that we do. And it's not about us, but it is all about Jesus. And and it was part of John sharing about uh, about Jesus. But the quote on here, or the what the what was on the back, was when John stepped aside and gave Jesus center stage. He was saying, in effect, my life is not about me, about my popularity, my power or success. My life is all about him, Jesus, the Savior of the world. It's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. Not about building me up, but about building him up. Not about who I am, but who he is. And he must become greater, and I must become less. I thought that was appropriate. Mama and Papa, they they do a they do a lot of stuff for these children, and and they take care of their, all their needs. Um, we talked about this in our Sunday school class one day, and we talked about how Mama is seventy years old, and Papa is like sixty eight. He's a couple years younger, but Mama, if you guys have ever seen the 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 movie Secretariat, where the the horse is just is just making strides and surging forward, surging forward, surging forward. And how come this horse was able to surge forward and everything that they were doing? It, the horse was nothing like it, never probably will be again. But the reason for that is because uh, of, of the horse's heart and how big it was. And, and that is exactly Mama and Papa and what they're doing. They are surging forward. They're 70 years old, taking care of 50 plus children in, in Chihuahua, taking care of another 25 or so in Wachochi. They're taking care of all their needs. They're sharing the gospel with these children every day. They're doing all these things with this many children at 70, taking care of an autistic child that, that lives in their home and has everyday, you know, bathing and, and everyday needs. And they're surging all the time to try to find what is the next thing that God wants them to do and how can they glorify God better way. 
So one thing that they want to try to do, and they may have an opportunity that you might get to meet them here next month. Uh, they may be trying to come in to see Papa's mother um, lives in an assisted living in Pittsburgh area. So if they can come in for that, they may be coming to the church. So hopefully we'll get to meet them uh, for those of you who haven't been able to meet them yet. But their mama's vision for this Christmas to have Christmas and Wachochi. And one thing that they want to try to do is it started out at about 1,000 kids, but that number has grown now to about 2,000. Who knows where it will end up. But um, what they want to do is have Christmas in Wachochi, and they're going to gra- gather all these children together, um, you know, maybe their mothers and stuff too. But the last time they did this a few years ago, they had people walking all night long, uh, four or five hours during the night just to get there on time. Um, to hear the gospel, hear what what uh, what they had to present about Jesus and and his love for them, but also they also wanted to give them a little gift, and a little gift for their Christmas thing would be a toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, deodorant, things we kind of take for granted. Maybe a little gift or a toy or something. So Mama's vision is to get all these children together, tell them about Jesus, about that story about Jesus, but also to to share a little gift with them. What we wanted to do was we wanted to try to get the church all together to try to come up with bags similar to this that we could ship them, but it doesn't seem to be working out that way. So we're going to try to figure out other ways, maybe uh, donations or, you know, church gives some money towards that, but we want to try to assist them in this uh, in this. Christmas in Wachochi this year, so be thinking about that. Um, maybe we can we can try to to help them out. So this vision that they have and and sharing the gospel to a, a lot of people outside of the the normal realm of their the, the orphanages there uh, can to come to fruition this year. So that's all I have. Unless you have any questions, anybody? Nobody had any questions. We had lots of questions the first round. That's exactly it. What you said there, Johnny, and it was all, it was all God. It was absolutely God. It was it was a wonderful way to 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 come into this area. None of us have been there. We don't know these people. Never got started with that. Um, a few years ago, when we were looking at we want to do an out of country mission trip, we decided that that uh, you know we needed to get together and. You know, where's God leading us? What does he want us to do? And we got together at Tammy Parks one night, and there was a group of us sitting there, and, and we were like, we could go here, we could go there. You know, we've been praying about this. What does God want? And the phone rang, and it starts just as easy as that, the phone rang. And it just happened to be a uh, um, a foreign exchange student that Tammy had, and, and he was just at Chihuahua. Uh, with Lily the Valley and he had been there and he's like these people really need help they're praying for people to to help out and you know it, it seems kind of funny we're sitting having a mission meeting and 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 he calls he he doesn't usually call like that but just out of the blue he called and and said we were having a mission meeting and he said you won't believe this but he said these people really need your help they need your prayers and and if you're looking to go someplace I'm sure that they would love to have you there so that's where the ball kind of started and how it got rolling. It wasn't any choice of ours. It was just purely God, whatever he wanted. And, and he, made that, he made that connection that night right there at the kitchen table. So. Uh, we give them financial support. We, we usually take uh, mission from, or money from the missions budget that we, we develop every year. We do do that. Um, if someone wants to give towards missions or something like that, you know, you can always add that. I see a lot of people fill out their envelope or something. They're given towards, you know, current expenses or something like that. You can give money towards missions that way, too. If there's something specific you want to give to to help out with that, I'm sure if you see Tammy back there, she'll tell you exactly, you know, what to write or how to how to put it down so it goes in the 
correct place. But they don't get a lot of support. They do get some support from um, other people. They don't have a lot of, like, churches. Years ago, like before 2000, um, you know, the 9-11, 2001, before that, they had a lot of people come. Um, A lot of churches would come. They don't have that anymore. Uh, Everything dropped off drastically after 9-11, and uh, they didn't they didn't get nearly as much support and then recession and stuff like that it even got worse but uh, the last couple of years they've had nobody else coming in and but us coming in to help and as some of you might know they don't have any support from the government there's no welfare there's no you know food assistance there's nothing what they get is because they pray every day they fast they do whatever it takes um, and they just you know, they do it all by the faith faith they have in Jesus. So everything is provided by God, and, and that's the way they live every life, every day of their life. So some do. Some grow up. Some go out of the orphanage, and they go do other things. Um, um, some stay in close contact, some not so much. But for the most part, there, there are children there that have grown up through that system that are still there as adults, uh, and they're there to help. They, they do different things. Um, I shared earlier, I said that they have uh, Noema. She grew up there and did a lot of stuff. Noema is like their business manager. I, and, and for those of you who don't know what all that entails, just ask Tammy McKnight back there because she, you know, that's what we call her, Tammy McKnight of Chihuahua because she does everything and, and she can do so many things and she's very good at what she does. But that is an example of, a, you know, one of the orphans that come up through there. There are others that uh, there, they're almost like a big brother, a big sister, help take care of some of the younger ones um, and that sort of thing so some of them stay in that that system all their life they won't leave that others will um, have graduated went to college you know they've they've moved some are here in the state some are in Mexico some other places but um, there's there's lots of different scenarios so they have lots of opportunity to to do whatever they want So uh, one of the, the, we were talking about beforehand about, um, about getting up their prayer life. And in Wachochi, um, they're very, very serious about their prayer life. And, and again, if you're depending on God for everything and not just, you know, the money you have in your pocket or I can go to Walmart or Giant and pick up food for this afternoon for a meal, they don't have that opportunity. They got to pray for everything. Um, so in Wachochi, whenever uh, a, a typical day is, they would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. The leaders would be up at 4 o'clock, and they would go into the main cafeteria area, and they would start to pray. And they might pray from 4 to 5. And the children would be up at 5 o'clock, and they would come in, and the children were on their knees, and they would pray to God for everything. And then they would pray uh, together for other things also. I mean, whatever it is that their needs were and, and for health or whatever it might be. But they start at 5 o'clock. They praise God, do all these things. And, and by 7 o'clock, they've had breakfast. They're off doing their chores and, and sweeping their dorm area out and making their beds, and they're ready to go off to school. So that was like a typical day for them. Some of the children we were there are in school and some of them are out of school. So it just depends uh, that that week or that time frame we're in there. Some are finished, some are are continuum. Okay, if there isn't any more questions. Again, we just want to thank you so much for for your love and support and and your prayers, you know, your financial assistance, all the things. And Mom and Papa really appreciate it. Um, they they truly love us, you know, love our church, and 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 they really appreciate the, all the help that you guys have given, and and we do too. And you can feel those prayers whenever you're there, and and things are not happening the way you want to sometimes. And it's it's nice to know that you have that love and support back home. So. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning and we just thank you so much for the love that you have for the people of Mexico and, and for the love that you have for us here. Lord, we just ask you to continue that mission where we, we are able to go there and put people on the ground and, and serve in Mexico and how, however it is that you want us to, to continue this mission, Lord, that we would be able to continue that and, and help these people, um, not only in their, their just daily needs, but um, also in their, their faith walk with you, Lord. And we just thank you that for Mama and Papa. We praise and thank you uh, that they are able to do this, that they're willing us to do this, and, and the workers that are there, Lord. And we just lift them all up to you, and we ask you to just uh, continue that mission there. And, and we may be to give you all the praise and the glory for everything that we do. And we just thank you again for your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.